Hi, I'm Matt Landers, Head of Developer Relations at WP Engine, and today I want to give an introduction to WP GraphQL. So if you've ever written a headless WordPress site, you may have only used the REST API, uh, but there's another way that you can do it. You can use a GraphQL. If you're not familiar with GraphQL, that's fine. We're going to go over uh, what it is right now in this video. So let's pull up a site where I have GraphQL installed. Uh, it's on, I'm using local for this. And I'm just going to click it and come into the admin. And the only thing I have installed in here is the WP GraphQL plugin. That's it. So you can go add new, find that uh, in the list of plugins and add it. When you do, you're going to get this graphical IDE at the top. So this is pretty cool. Let's check it out. So in here, we can write queries. So there's a few differences from REST that we want to point out. First of all, all GraphQL queries are sent to the same endpoint. So when you install that plugin, you end up with an endpoint at your site slash GraphQL. So you send a post request to slash GraphQL and you send the query, which is the body here of what we're creating. And that will um, be the query that's going to run to determine what result is sent back. So let's create a simple query. So we type query. We want to pull back post. It uses the relay spec, which we won't dig deep into that, but essentially if you're going to pull that multiple of something, you're going to say post, which will be plural or whatever the type is. And then you'll have nodes under that. So under nodes is where we can actually say what fields do we want to bring back? So we'll say ID, slug, and excerpt just for fun here. We'll run that and we'll see that that's what we got back. So we have just a JSON object that has our data, our posts, and then our nodes, which is an array of all of the different posts in our uh, WordPress site. Uh, we can change what we want to pull back here just by changing the query. So if I want to pull back all of the content, I can add that here and it'll pull back all this HTML content that we have. Now these posts aren't very big, so the content net serps look pretty similar. Uh, but we can also find different links to our data. So in a graph, uh, in the sense of like true GraphQL, there are uh, edges and nodes. And these edges and nodes are like the relationships between the different content types. So a post has an author. A post has comments. So we can pull those back in one request. Whereas in REST, typically you would need to go get the post and then go get the comments for that post, go get the author for that post. But with GraphQL, it's cool in that we can reference all of those different relationships uh, and pull back only what we need. So let's pull back the author. And the author is has a node since there can only be one author and we just want the name of that author. And when we run that, we'll see that we get the author back in our request now too. So you can start to see that we're only pulling back the content that we want and that can change just based on the query uh, that we create. All right, so this is cool. We have an editor where we can do this. We can also come over here on the Explorer and just add different things uh, to it and it'll build that query out for us. We can use this in our app whenever we wanna make a request we can come build our query here in this IDE, copy it into our front end site, and use that query. So let's uh, go create that front end site. All right, so we'll just come over to the terminal and we'll run npx create next app. So we're gonna just create a little Next.js app for this. We'll call it WP GraphQL. And we're going to use TypeScript, and then we'll need to install a couple of dependencies as well. So once this creates, we're going to go into the WP GraphQL folder. Those errors are fine. All right, cool. We're in the folder now. Uh, we want to install TypeScript. Uh, we need the types for React and the types for Node. And we'll do that as a developer dependency. And we also want to install Apollo and GraphQL. So Apollo is the client that we're going to use to make the GraphQL request. It gives us some helper functions and some caching. Uh, and it's reliant on the standard GraphQL library as well. <clears throat> so we'll install that. And then we'll open this up in VS Code. I did. When I run create next step, it creates some pages for me that I don't really care about. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and wipe those out. All right, cool. 
now let's create our app. All right, the first thing we need to do is wrap our entire app in a Apollo provider. And that provider makes sure that all of our other pages and components have access to the client that is used to make the GraphQL request. So let's go ahead and create a new file. We'll call it underscore app.tsx. And this is how we override the default app that Next gives us. Uh, I've got this code already, so I don't want to type it all out for you. Uh, but essentially all that we're doing down here is wrapping um, our main app in Apollo Provider and providing it the client. Here we're going to tell it where our GraphQL server actually lives or where WordPress lives. So I'm using that local site that we were just looking at. And it's gql.local slash GraphQL. So whatever your site is slash GraphQL is what you'll want to put here. Uh, and you can get this code off of my GitHub. All right, now let's just create a simple home page that makes a GraphQL request. So we'll say const home, simple React component. Hold up. All right. Now let's export this so I don't forget. Now Apollo gives us a helper hook that we can use to make a GraphQL request called use query. So we're going to make that request using use query and then also using the GQL library where we can pass in our actual uh, query that we want to make. So let me import these. All right. So we want to do this just like we did over in the IDE. We'll say query posts nodes and we'll pull back the ID, the title and the slug. All right, let's save that. And I also want to create a type for this in TypeScript. So I'm going to create a global.d.ts and I want to create a type for a post. So it has an ID, it's got a slug, it's got an author, uh, which has a node, which has a name. All right, cool. Uh, we also want to pull back the excerpt and the content at some point. All right. Cool. This isn't formatting, which has me worried. All right, there we go. All right, so now we can use this in our typings over on our homepage. So when we pull this back, we want to pull back all of our posts. Uh, so we want to pull the post back. It comes back kind of strange in the data. So we saw uh, in the IDE. Let's check that out one more time so we can understand this. Our result comes back under data, posts, nodes. So let's simplify this a little bit over here and say that post equals data dot post dot nodes. And it's actually an array of posts, so we can use that type now. Now whenever we're using this, we'll get our IntelliSense down here. All right, so let's create a UL and we'll loop through all of the posts and then we'll return an li uh, for all of the posts that we have let's do it all right so we want to say posts that map we'll grab a post out of that and we'll return li and here let's just put the post title to make sure that we're good and we're working because that title is not showing up Must have spelled that wrong. Oh, we didn't add a title. See, this is why you use TypeScript. Awesome. All right, cool. So now we have this. It should work. Cross our fingers, pray to the demo gods. And we'll run our site. Then we'll just click this link. And we should make a request to GraphQL with that query, pull back our results, and show them on the page. So this is pretty cool. So that simply, we were able to just go get the data that we need. Now, we didn't use the excerpt in this situation. Let's go change that. 
so in the li let's have an um, h2 for our title and then let's show the excerpt in a div because the excerpt can have html in it so we're going to use dangerously set html and we'll do post that excerpt cool now we'll just save that go back over to our site and we should see the excerpt but we're not excerpt oh we didn't pull it back so we just add that to our request it's, it's working it's had to refresh usually don't have to refresh but i did there All right, we are getting a warning that uh we don't have a key here so we can just put the id on here and that'll remove that warning from react now we have a clean working uh product all right cool so this doesn't look great but now what if we want to click on a post and then go to a different page and show the actual content for that post let's do that real quick too so we can create a new page uh, and this is a dynamic page and i'm going to call it slug in brackets and that's that allow us to capture that slug in a query parameter and pass that into our graphql call to pull back just that one post whenever we're on this page so let's call this the post page we're just going to look very similar in that we're um, going to call use query here so we have data i'm going to call use query and dql just like we did on the other page i'm going to export this and then let's make the query that we're going to do here so we're going to do a query we want to pull out just one post the id is the slug which we need to pull that out of the router so what we can do here is say uh, we'll have that the query out of the router which is use router and next and we got to import that so we'll import use router um, next slash router awesome and then when we're making our query we can just put in here query dot slug all right and we have to put id type here and we need to tell it that it's a slug so this is just details around the syntax for how to create a graphql query to pull back one post but you can go play with this in the ide and then copy this over too but i just wanted to show it uh, from scratch now since we're not pulling multiple back we don't have to put nodes here which is nice uh, and i can just pull back the title the content and then let's pull, also pull back the author here and then we'll put that on the screen as well all right so then we just need to return our results uh, we'll put it in an article we'll have an h1 for our title so post that title oh, we haven't created the post yet so let me do that so it's data not post and this is a type post so the reason i created that type over there in that global file now i can just use that again here and post that title and then we want to also show our author so we'll just add a uh, let's say a paragraph element here with our author so post.author.node.name and then we'll show the content of our post in a div and we just do the same way we did the excerpt post.content all right now we're not quite done because we have no way to get to this page well we could just type it in manually but that's not fun uh, but we want to go ahead and oh, i need to pull in graphql here too i'm gonna go ahead and create a link from this page to the other one so what we're going to do is we're going to import a next link import link from net slash link and we'll wrap our title in that link so we'll just say link and you put an href in here 
and we're going to navigate with the slug. So we'll put the slug as the URL that we're going to go to. And then that's what will take us to this dynamic component where we can pull that out of the router and use that in our query to talk to WordPress. So we'll just do slash post.slug. I'm going to copy this because I have to put an anchor tag under here. It looks exactly like it. I wish you didn't have to and next. Maybe they'll change that. And then we'll wrap all of that title and save it. And then we'll go back to our site. And you'll notice that, whoops. Oh, we need to go back. So what's happening is whenever we hit this, we don't quite have our post yet. It's got to make the query. So the first time we come in, we don't have all of these elements. So we can either do something like this and type sure this is cool. It'll just say, hey, if it's here, keep going deeper. If not, don't worry about it. And then it'll work. Uh, we also could put a loading there and check to see if the post is here yet and show a loading screen too. And I can show you what that would look like. So like right here, we could say, if not post return, a div that says loading. Now when we come over here and we refresh, you see loading real quick flash there. So this is cool. So now we have a little working site. We're using GraphQL. We're only pulling about the data we need on each page. That's what's really neat about GraphQL. And we can, we can just add to that query anytime we want to add more data. So if we go back over here, if we wanted to add, you know, whatever the any any content that we can pull if we wanted comments we could pull those back here we just add them to our query as we need them in our ui and then that way we're sure that we're only ever pulling about the data that we need so our requests and our responses are as small as they possibly can be which is awesome we want to create a really fast site that's one of the main benefits of headless all right so hopefully that gave you a brief introduction into graphql and how to create a simple site uh, using graphql so if you have any questions, make sure to reach out to me or ask on the, on the video and we'll create new content that's related to uh, whatever your questions are or whatever you guys wanna see. So uh, subscribe to the channel and let us know what you think. So happy coding.